heaviest snowstorm to hit the upper Midwest in two winters dumped snow across North and South Dakota, Minnesota, and Western Wisconsin over the weekend. Combining with strong winds and cold temperatures, it made traveling treacherous across the area. Minnesota State Police said more than 300 car crashes were reported from Saturday night to Sunday. However, none were fatal. Spokesman from the Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport said more than 150 flights were canceled due to the storm. Major highways in South Dakota and Minnesota were closed because of whiteout blizzard conditions. The heaviest snowfall was from eastern South Dakota through southern Minnesota. Storm totals topped out between 8 to 15 inches. Good evening, I'm Courtney Oliver. And I'm Matthew Neese. Welcome to the James River Valley Report. Thanks to all that snow, it's beginning to look and feel a lot like Christmas, and it was just in time for the Jamestown College Wind Ensemble's Christmas Concert. Coming off their fall tour in late November, the musicians had just a few short weeks to prepare. The concert combined large ensemble fun with a fun and traditional Christmas theme. It took place Sunday afternoon in the Ryland Fine Arts Center's Denault Auditorium on the campus of Jamestown College. Band director Benjamin Schneider said that it was more than just the campus community who enjoyed the performance. The same community members in general tend to, to subscribe to our concerts and attend and they're always very vocal about how much they enjoy and they would miss it if it was not. The City of Fargo is planning to offer buyouts to residents of 56 homes next year as part of a plan to protect them from Red River flooding. Officials say the buyouts will cost about $24 million. The program is being funded with city sales tax revenue. Homeowners are being offered 110% of the assessed value of the property, plus a $5,000 moving allowance. If they relocate to another house in Fargo, the city will pay up to $15,000 toward any special assessments on the new property. The area battled three straight major floods from 2009 to 2011. A proposed $2 billion diversion channel has yet to reach Congress for consideration. The Jamestown Water Treatment Plant has come up with a solution to fix their problem with wastewater. Changes in plant operations have reduced flows of water used to clear filters and water softening equipment that had been flowing into storage lagoons or ponds. Materials in the water were allowed to settle to the bottom of the ponds before water was processed. The North Dakota Department of Health ruled that bringing water that had been stored outdoors was against water treatment standards. The plant put in new filters to reduce the amount of water being stored in lagoons. According to the calendar, winter is less than two weeks away. With the recent cold temperatures and snowfall, it seems like winter is here already. But if you take a look at the ice, it doesn't appear that way. Ice fishers around the area are being urged to take extra precautions as there is open water on the lakes. According to the United States Army Corps of Engineers, three inches of ice is the minimum amount needed to support a group of walking in a single file line. Seven inches will support a single passenger vehicle. Officials say snow on the ice will act as insulation, so it won't gain any thickness so far. So far, thickness is only six inches. North Dakota Governor Jack Dalrymple is recommending a $12.8 billion two-year budget to the legislature. Dalrymple's plan includes big spending increases for public works, local schools, and North Dakota's university system. It also provides slight tax reductions for corporations and individuals, as well as giving oil producing counties greater share of tax revenues. Well, it was pretty cold outside today. Jessica Galseth is in next with the forecast for the rest of the week when we come back. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. Supporters of a coal-to-liquid fuel plant proposed for Western North Dakota are taking even more time to study the project. North American Coal Corporation spokesman David Straley says that developers will ask for a fifth extension before 2013. The developers need favorable coal legislation and a clear United States energy policy for the $4 billion project to move forward. More than $1 million of state aid has already been used studying the project. President Barack Obama is asking for public support today to raise taxes 
on the wealthiest Americans. He spoke in Michigan saying he won't sign a deal unless it includes higher taxes on the rich. It is just one day after he and House Speaker John Boehner met for the first time to discuss ways to avoid the fiscal cliff. Although Republicans oppose the higher tax approach, some GOP lawmakers are saying the party will relent on taxes so it can win concessions from President Obama on changes to benefit programs such as Medicare. Numerous same-sex couples crowded Seattle City Hall for a day of wedding ceremonies yesterday as it was the first day they could marry after the state's voter-approved gay marriage law took effect. By Saturday morning, more than 600 same-sex marriage licenses were issued in the city. Washington, Maine, and Maryland became the first states to pass same-sex marriage by popular vote. They now join six other states permitting the marriages. Mexican singer Jenny Rivera died in a plane crash, crash Saturday night, confirmed by her father and brother. Authorities say the wreckage of the plane was found last night in northern Mexico with no apparent survivors. Two pilots and four other passengers were also on board. The plane was not recognizable, but the evidence suggests it was the aircraft carrying the singer. Rivera has sold some 15 million records in her career and won several awards and Grammy nominations. Well, we're definitely saddened to hear about Ms. Rivera's death, Jessica, but does the weather forecast look a little bit happier this week? I guess, Matthew, it depends on how you feel about cold weather. <laughs> this weekend, we received about two inches of snow here in Jamestown, and then that varied across the county as well as the states. As we mentioned earlier, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Wisconsin got the bulk of the snow this weekend with 8 to 15 inches in several areas in all three states, with highways closed and flights canceled. Here in Jamestown, we didn't experience as much difficulty. In fact, we got a little break from the snow yesterday. And then today, at about noon, we began to see scattered snow showers, which is a term we haven't been too used to lately. Tonight, a chance of flurries with a low around 8 degrees. Tomorrow, very cold, a high barely reaching 20 degrees with some wind from the west. Tomorrow night, a slight chance of snow with a low around 14. Wednesday, a little warmer than Tuesday, about 31 degrees, and a little south wind. And overnight, low of 15. Thursday, dress warm, 18 degrees is the high for the day, and it only gets colder as the sun sets. We're looking at a high of 8 for the night, with a 20% chance of snow. Friday about the same as Thursday, a high of 17 degrees and a low of 6. This weekend might be one to stay in. Saturday and Sunday will barely reach 20 degrees and the lows will be half that. So this week is going to be very cold and you know today I saw someone wearing shorts and that's just not going to fly this week. Way too cold for that. Definitely not for me either because you have to take into account the wind chill factor yeah, too definitely. which can plunge it well below zero. It's going to be way too cold. <sighs> well, <laughs> thanks Jessica with the weather. When we come back, Josh Knutson has sports and Courtney Oliver tells us where you can get one of the most expensive cups of coffee that I don't think I want any part of. The odds of the Big Easy winning the Open Championship once and the US Open Championship twice. One in 780 million. The odds of this professional golfer having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 88. Ernie Els encourages you to learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. 
It's been yet another sad weekend stemming from the NFL. Josh Knutson is here to tell us what is going on. Uh, yeah, Courtney, that's two weekends we've had uh, tragic deaths in the NFL. This time it's coming out of Texas. Dallas Cowboys nose tackle Josh Brent posted a $500,000 bond and was released from jail about an hour after the Cowboys defeated the Bengals, according to a published source. Brent was the driver in the Saturday morning accident that killed 25-year-old practice squad linebacker Jerry Brown. Brent was arrested after the crash in Irving, Texas and charged with intoxicated manslaughter. The Jimmy men's basketball squad was in action Saturday evening against Dickinson State. The Jimmys outscored the Blue Hawks 51-33 in the second half to pull away for an 89-74 victory. It was the fifth time this season the Jimmys entered halftime trailing the opposing team, only to rally in the second half for a victory. Devin Thomas led the way for the Jimmys with 27 points and 8 rebounds, followed by Mark Hogue's 19 points and 5 assists. The Jimmys are now 7-6 on the season and will play at Minot State Tuesday evening. The Jimmy men's wrestling team was also able to win four straight matches only to come up short as Waldorf, Iowa won the other six matches en route to a 30-21 win over Jamestown College Saturday at the Waldorf Duels. Freshmen Dylan Kiefer and Sam Brown posted back-to-back -back pins for the Jimmys at 141 and 149 pounds. Jacob Miller's win at 157 and Jonathan Gonzalez's pin at 165 capped the fourth straight win for the JC. The Jimmies also squared off against Southwest Minnesota State, falling 40-3. The Jimmies were able to pick up a 7-5 decision from Dylan Kiefer at 141, their only win in the duel. The Jimmies will end their first half of the season Friday with duels at Ridgewater Community College in Hutchinson, Minnesota. The Jimmy women's basketball team was also in action on Saturday when they took on the Blue Hawks of Dickinson State. Bridget Schuneman led the way for the Jimmies, scoring 20 points and bringing down 7 rebounds as the Jimmies won the game by a comfortable 15 points, 72-57. Junior Casey Geffrey made her season debut as well, coming back from major knee injuries suffered last year. The Jimmies did have two injury scares, however, as All-American point guard Hannah Steele rolled an ankle in the second half and freshman Jessica Buck tweaked a wrist. The Jimmy women's wrestling team cruised to three easy victories at the Waldorf Duels in Forest City, Iowa on Saturday. Jamestown defeated Missouri Baptist College, Waldorf, and Midland. Senior Tiffany Sluick earned AII Female Athlete of the Week for her three-fall performance at 130 pounds. She won her first match at 32 seconds with a fall in the second period, her second match with a technical fall in the second period by scores of 6-0 and 8-0, and she won her third match in the second period at a fall of 135. Jamestown College senior volleyball player Katie Zent was named to the first team for the Capital One Academic All-American selected by the College Sports Information Directors of America. The team is made up of student athletes from the NAIA, Canadian and two-year institutions. Zent led JC to their record in school history with a 27-9 mark. She tallied 314 kills, 115 blocks and 287 digs for the season, while maintaining a 3.94 grade point average in the classroom. And that wraps up quite a busy weekend for the Jimmies. Yeah, sounds like it was a pretty exciting weekend at that. Absolutely. And before we go, we bring you to the hills of northern Thailand, where a herd of 20 elephants is excreting some of the world's most expensive coffee. The exotic new brew is made from beans eaten by the Thai elephants and picked from their waist a day later. A reaction inside the elephant creates the coffee's unique earthy taste. At $500 per pound, it's among the world's priciest coffees. If you're looking to give it a try, you'll have to travel to the remote corners of the world. For now, it's only offered in northern Thailand, the Maldives, and Abu Dhabi, with a price tag of about $50 a cup. And that's the James River Valley Report for this Monday, December 10th. For Matthew Neese, Jessica Gulseth, and Josh Knudsen, I'm Courtney Oliver. Thanks for joining us. Good night.